traffic, Cessna 52241, taxiing to runway 28 at Douglas. Colby traffic, Warrior 81312, taking off runway 17, departing to the southeast at Colby. Denver flight watch, Cessna 52241, Yugo VOR, over. Your radio allows you to communicate both with ground facilities and with other aircraft. Its proper use is important for smooth operations within the nation's airspace system. Although communicating by radio may be a new experience for you, you will quickly become familiar with the terminology and the format. After a brief look at some of the unique characteristics of radio communications, we will concentrate on some sample transmissions which relate to uncontrolled airports. A phonetic alphabet is used to reduce the confusion between letters that sound alike. For example, the letters E and P sound very similar. So the words echo and papa are used to represent these letters. Nine is the only number pronounced differently. It is said as niner. The key to good radio communications is to be prepared and brief. Most communications can be divided into just four basic elements. Identify the facility you are calling. Identify yourself. State the message or request. Conclude the transmission. Let's take a closer look at these elements. When you identify the facility, you may be speaking to someone who is operating a ground-based radio, or you could be addressing other pilots in the area. When you identify yourself, use the full registration number of the airplane. Precede this number with either the aircraft type, model, or manufacturer's name. You would identify this airplane as Cessna 52241. Sometimes a shortened version of the registration is used, but you should not shorten it yourself. Wait until the person you're talking to does it first. Your message or request lets others know your location and your intentions. To conclude your transmission, you may use the word over to indicate you are waiting for a response or roger to indicate you have understood the message. If the status of your communication is obvious, no conclusion is needed. Use these four elements to help organize your thoughts and decide what you're going to say. Write the message down if necessary, but be brief and to the point. When you're ready to talk, be sure the radio is properly tuned to the desired frequency, as discussed in the textbook. Then listen to be sure you won't interrupt another call. When the frequency is clear, hold the mic directly in front of your mouth and push the transmit button. Speak clearly and use a normal conversational tone. When you're finished, release the button and listen for a response. Let's turn our attention now to general radio procedures. At each uncontrolled airport, one specific frequency is used to communicate your intentions or to receive information. This frequency is called the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, or CTAF. You should continuously monitor and use this frequency when operating to or from an uncontrolled airport. It is very important to remain alert and continue to scan for other aircraft, since they may not be radio equipped and some pilots might not use the frequency. There is no substitute for the see and avoid concept. By using the appropriate CTAF and applying good operating practices, you can enhance safety around uncontrolled airports. For example, during the approach, make your initial call approximately 10 miles from the airport. When you reach the traffic pattern, continue to announce your position by reporting downwind, base, final, and when you are clear of the runway. In a similar manner, when you depart an uncontrolled airport, announce your intentions before you begin to taxi. And before you taxi onto the active runway. Let's look now at some examples of how to use the common traffic advisory frequency. At an airport with no ground-based radio facilities, the CTAF will be multicom. 
and you will transmit on 122.9er. Since there are no ground facilities with this service, you will make your call to any aircraft operating in the area. Your initial call in this case is Vicar Traffic, Warrior 81312, 10 miles south, 4,500, landing Baker. When you reach the airport, continue to announce your position in the traffic pattern. Baker Traffic, Warrior 81312, entering left downwind, runway 29er, Baker. Baker Traffic, Warrior 81312, Turning left base, runway 29er Baker. Baker traffic, Warrior 81312, turning final, runway 29er Baker. Baker traffic, Warrior 81312, clear of runway 29er Baker. When you depart an uncontrolled airport, the calls will be Baker traffic, Warrior 81312, taxiing to runway 29er Baker. Baker traffic, Warrior 81312, taking off on runway 29er, departing southwest, Baker. At other airports, the common traffic advisory frequency may be Unicom. This is a privately operated radio station that may provide wind and runway information. In this case, your initial call will go to the Unicom operator. Mansfield Unicom. Cessna 52241, 10 miles east, descending through 6000, landing Mansfield. Request wind and runway information for Mansfield. Over. If there is an operator on duty, the typical reply will be Cessna 241, Mansfield Unicom, wind 110 at 5, favored runway is 09er. The Unicom operator is not a controller. Therefore, you would continue to announce your position to Mansfield Traffic, just as in the previous example. Let's turn our attention now to communicating with a flight service station. An FSS provides a variety of services that you can access through your radio. Some of these include opening and closing a flight plan, weather updates, and at certain locations, airport advisories. When you communicate with an FSS, you normally precede the call with the word radio. A flight service station operates on a number of frequencies. Sometimes you can communicate and receive the reply on the same frequency. At other times, you may want to communicate on one frequency and receive on another, such as a VOR. During your initial call to an FSS, specify the frequency or facility you are listening to before you state your message or request. Casper Radio, Warrior 81312, receiving Warland VOR. Over. At an airport with a non-automated flight service station and no control tower, the FSS usually provides airport advisory service on a CTAF frequency of 123.6. Scott's Bluff Radio, Cessna 52241, ready to taxi, VFR westbound, request airport advisory. Cessna 241, Scott's Bluff Radio, wind 280 at 6, favored runway 30, altimeter 29095, no reported traffic. Talking on the radio is a skill that requires practice and a sound knowledge of basic radio communications procedures. As you gain experience and explore the variety of services that are available, you will find that your confidence as well as safety will increase.